Doug Brown. Hello, Doug. Well, hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? So far, so good. Good. Be Everybody doing well, huh? I'm going to be able to join you for 29 minutes and then I got to hop off onto a different call. So just make sure you can't make it 29.3. <laughs> okay, you're a good negotiator, Roxanne. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate that. I love this. We have a great crowd today. Sandy's here. Grant. Grant. Hi, Grant. Hi, Sandy. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Tom Lemansky, yet again. Mm. You guys <laughs> seeing a lot of each other, huh? <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hi there. <laughs> Mr. Brown is there. Mr. Hi, Grant. Hi, Hi Bob. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Not just all the people Hi. from the other group. <laughs> and Linda. Linda. Yeah. Hey, Linda. Go. We got a full house, guys. This is great. Okay, I am going to um, mute you all. Don't take that personally, please. Uh, I think you probably. Why isn't it muting everybody? Okay, there we go. You're all muted, but you can unmute yourself. Also, I'm sure you are all using Zoom, so you probably know this. Forgive me if I'm repeating stuff you already know. But if you go down to the bottom menu bar and you click, click on participants in the bottom of that, uh, well, now I don't see it. But you should see uh, a listing where you can put up your hand or just put up your hand when you have comments or questions or um, anything that you'd like to, to join or to share with all of us. So in a moment, I am going to make a formal introduction of my friend and colleague and co-facilitator for our session today. That's a gentleman up here on the top line. He's in the same place on your screen as he is on mine. He's on the top line, second one in from on the right. Peter Margaritas, uh, he's our co-facilitator. So he and I have joined forces to do this. So everybody wave, hey Peter. How you doing? Hi, everybody. Great. Great. Love it. I'll get to that introduction in just a moment. So you're probably all wondering what brought us here today or not. Either way, I'll tell you. <laughs> Wendy and I had a conversation, as we do off and on often, uh, a few weeks ago, and we were talking about the situation we were entering into, not even knowing we would now be in week four of our, of our current um, isolation, I guess, and lockdown. And we were talking about the learning labs that we do for the Trusted Advisors Network. And Wendy said, hey, Rox, you know, if you have any ideas about anything that, that you might like to offer, we're sure open to it. So it occurred to me at the time that so many, I don't know about all of us, maybe some of us, but certainly our clients are going into a whole new experience now of working I've been doing this for years and years. Peter's been doing this for years and years, and I'm, I know that many of you have too, but it's different now, even if we have worked from home for a long time. And for our clients, I know for mine, the people within these organizations go to an office every day. This is what they're used to doing. They're used to those interactions and everything else. And now, suddenly, they are thrust into a whole new environment that they've never been in before. So Wendy and I chatted about that, and we said, well, Maybe this would be a good idea that Peter and I could come to you today and share with you some of our experiences, listen to some of yours, and share some ideas and thoughts around this, some of which you've probably heard, maybe a few things that you haven't. But we're here simply to have a conversation with you and open this up and share some of the things we've learned along the way. So all that being said, you all know me, I think. Roxanne, I don't know if it's me or you, but your audio is, is fading in and out a little bit. I've been and I'm not this, sure why. I've been told this many times and I haven't done it the right <laughs> thing about it yet. Thank you, Mr. Margaritas. <laughs> I need a new computer is what I need, but thanks, Linda. Not so if I get closer to the computer, is this better? Yes, a little bit. No. Roxanne, do you have... On your audio settings, do you have the box clicked for letting your microphone connect your, um, uh, take charge of your volume? No. Uh, go, to, go down by your mute button, hit the carrot, look at, uh, click on audio settings, 
Yeah. See where the you got video and underneath microphone, and then there's a little box that you can check. Right. That for for microphone. Got it. Is that checked or unchecked? Oh, I'm on audio. I'm in the audio. What what's supposed to be checked? Audio settings for microphone. Basically, it's a it's a checkbox for letting your mic letting your letting your system control your outbound volume on your microphone. Uh, can I share a screen just can I have your permission to share a screen just for a second? Absolutely. I'm sorry, guys. So I clicked on the microphone. Now I'm on audio settings. Got it. Right here. Automatically adjust microphone volume. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Then one of the things you can try to do is uncheck it and see if that if see if, do uncheck it and then slide your microphone this slider here, um, slide that up closer to max volume. Got it. Now I've done that. Is that any better? Is that sounding a little bit better? Yes. yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate that. Always leave it to you. Right. Okay. Wonderful. So. Uh, where was I? Let's go back. Let me know if you have any other issues and we'll address those immediately. Um, so you all know about me. I've been around this network for, for a number of years now. <clears throat> and I entered into the entrepreneurial seizure when the construction company that I worked for was sold. And I couldn't stay. I needed to move on and make a really big choice. And so I chose to uh, follow my purpose which was leadership and helping to develop other people and organizations into the best things that they could be. And that's how I found all of you. And you were one of the originals in that whole journey. Um, my, my friend and colleague, Peter, has his own story. And we'll share more of this as we go along, as I'd love to hear from you, too. Um, he's a rather curious fellow. <laughs> he's a CPA. He is also a CSP, which is, cert which is a certified speaking professional. He's also an improv virtuoso and a highly successful entrepreneur. Peter, I'll let you say the rest. Well, thank you very much for that nice introduction. I owe you another 20. I'm going to <laughs> Yeah, you do. I appreciate it, though. Um, my last name is pronounced like a cocktail, margaritas, but it's spelled more like an inflammation, margaritas. <laughs> you know, those Greeks, they just make you sick all the time. And I am Greek. <laughs> And I should be in a restaurant right now. On a Aussie, that's what I thought I was going to do with my life. I grew up in a Greek American household. I started in the restaurant business at 12 years old and went to the University of Kentucky, worked my way through college in the restaurants. But then I found myself in banking and I think I lost a bet somewhere along the way. And I went to Case Western Reserve University and earned a master's degree in accountancy, I became an accountant and a CPA as well. I'm not a good one. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've had to pay penalty interest on family taxes because I've done them wrong. Thus, the, the nickname given to me by a former employer during a performance review, I was told I was the accidental accountant. So that was the nicest thing my boss had said to me up to that point in time. And I thanked her. And basically, I've trademarked the name and it's the name of my business. Um, but what I did learn early on was when I walked into a, the Price Waterhouse in Cleveland, Ohio, that all the air in the building was sucked out, or at least on that floor, because nobody was communicating. And I'm coming out of this Greek American gregarious customer service world into why, why did everybody stop talking? So I, I knew there's an opportunity there from a communication aspect, from a leadership aspect. And I've developed a, a speaking business based around the principles of improvisation. And in two weeks, you'll learn more about that because I'm going to do the learning lab on, uh, I forget the date, but it's in two weeks from today. Uh, it's a virtual improv workshop where we, we go through some real fun activities, but it also there's a meaning to everything that we do and how you can apply it into your business and into your world. So that's the kind of the skinny of everything. I've been doing this full time. Going out 10, this is my 10th year. 2010, I went full time and I, I tell everybody I have not worked a day since. Mm -hmm. Ask my spouse, you'll get a completely different answer. <laughs> 
I've been through that workshop. You'll all enjoy it. I, I hope you can I hope you can join in on that. One of the things that Peter and I were talking about as we were putting together um, our thoughts in this conversation today were as unexpected solopreneurs or as unexpected entrepreneurs when we walked into this and as so many people are doing today. We, we had no experience. Most of us didn't have a plan or really an idea of what this would all be about coming into it. And we have a lot of people out there now in the same place. So how do we best help them with our experience and background? And I, I started thinking back about what were some of the toughest moments for me uh, when I was sat there at home alone and not knowing what to do and was trying to peel myself off the ceiling and I was hanging on by my fingernails. <laughs> so what we've put together today is um, are certain topics around that and how we can help ourselves and others get away from that. Before we move on, Peter, was there any particular thing that, that you remember or that struck you when you first stepped into this entrepreneurial world? Yeah, my refrigerator would wink at me every time I walked by it. The pantry would wink at me. The couch would say, hey, come on, lay down for a while. We'll put something on the tube. We got like 150 channels to watch. Yeah, there was so many of those little distractions and I was so used to human contact that how I was successful, unfortunately we can't do it today, but how I was learned how to deal with it is I spent a lot of time at Starbucks and Panera working until I could work up the chops that I could have everything here, work here and not gain 50 pounds in two weeks. <laughs> Isn't that true? It helps yeah. to have a tribe as well. It helps to have a tribe. Thank you. I'm going to um, share my screen and as we go through this, um, please raise your hand or raise the virtual hand. Uh, for comments and so forth. We'll want to stay within our time frame, so kind of keep an eye on the clock as we go. But um, we did put together a little bit of a visual here for you. So let me share my screen. There. Can everybody see that? Yeah, everybody got it? Uh, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to see all of you. There we go. Okay. So we're calling this home, but not alone. <laughs> and you may ask why, because all of a sudden, as, as we'll talk about in a little bit, we all have a whole lot of new full-time employees we didn't have before. And that brings a whole new, a whole new way of looking at this into it. So we've broken down our conversation today into three things, the reality, the opportunity, and the plan, and where do we go from there? So here's the reality, and I wrote a little paragraph just to kind of kick this part off because in, in these topics, we wanted to like get our head around what are we really looking at here in terms of reality? It's completely different than where we've been before. And it's kind of like navigating uncharted waters. On a cloudy night, while rolling in really big waves, amid wind and horizontal rain, with no coastline in sight, maybe a lighthouse in the distance that keeps disappearing, and sharks, lots of sharks. So what do we do about that? Um, Peter and I were talking about this and he said, well, Rox, you know what? We're being overwhelmed by the ocean. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, we are, we're so focused on the ocean right now and we're not, a term in improv is we're not present. We're not being present in the moment that we're in. We're worried about all this unknown that we that we don't that we don't know what it is. But since we've never gone through anything like this, that can overtake our thought process and create this vortex. And if we can just realize that, focus on the things that I have control over, and become more present in our day and day out is a key to helping getting through this pandemic that we're dealing with. We have no timeline. I was sharing a few minutes ago that this uh, uh, Governor DeWine here in Ohio has decided to begin slowly opening the state May 1st. Okay, that's, that's good. We're starting that process, but the length of time and everything involved in it, I, I can't get wrapped up in what could August or what could September be like. I just need to focus on really now and maybe the next two weeks and, and just be present in that. And what we were talking about is that it, 
if you think about this, there, you know, there's good, bad, and there's ugly to it. And if you reverse that and look at the ugly first, it's, it's kind of like being in this ship at sea. There's a whole lot of fear, a whole lot of anxiety around this. And one of the things that I think is, is an intangible that a lot of us don't realize is that there is loss. There's loss behind this, which creates grief. And we need to really open our eyes to what it is and just look at that and say, okay, I get it. Once we put it in the middle of the table and look at it, we can say, okay, well, now I can start to deal with it a little bit better. There are restrictions I never thought I would have before. Um, it is a feeling of loss and it's a little bit overwhelming. Uh, I don't know what the rest of you are feeling or have felt or where you are now or what you've been through, but this would be a great time if anyone would, would like to share some of the things that they've been experiencing in terms, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. The other thing. Um, if you have other thoughts about how and what you are feeling, we'd love to hear that. And I cannot see all of you. I, I they could put their thoughts right now into the chat box and then we could uh, respond to it that way since that we're having, since we can't see everybody on time. Uh, Doug Brown raised his hand, Rox. Great. Go, Doug. You are. Hi. I, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, while mentally I'm in pretty good shape, I'll be the first to admit I've had acquaintances of mine that, um, that have passed away from COVID-19. And I've got um, the father of, of a good, of a family friend who's right now hospitalized and the, the, prognosis, the prognosis is not good. I've had friends of mine who have, who have gone through uh, being positive for the coronavirus and lived to tell about it. Um, so for me, when, when you hear the stories and the, and the deaths and so on, to me, it's not just academic because I know people that have really been truly impacted on that and, and, their, and their life is, you know, is really going to change. That, that, being, that being said, I'm absolutely in agreement with Peter and yourself in the sense of every day when I wake up, I just stay present in terms of what can I do today. Um, I'm not allowing myself to get wrapped up in terms of uh, what could be. I'm literally just trying to, uh, I'm trying to keep kind of walking, you know, one foot in front of the other while at the same time talking with our colleagues about helping people plan going forward so that they have some, they have a future to look into, but, but I don't want to steal any of your upcoming thunder. So so I'm going to, I'm going to hold my thoughts at that point. Thank you, Doug, because that's a perfect segue. We are going to talk about that and how to overcome some of this stuff. And, and you bring up a very good point. Some of my clients have had positive diagnoses in, in their organizations. And I have friends and, and family that are very high risk in this. Some, some with heart issues, some with uh, uh, respiratory issues, some diabetic issues. It's you know, there's a lot of different things that we could get very wrapped up in. So it's really, really important that we, we maintain our focus and we stay in the moment. As you said, and the other thing is being grateful. Uh, Nancy has her hand up. Thank you, Nancy. Hi, nice to see all of you. Nice um, I guess I'm a, I have sort of a different experience than many affiliates in that I actually do have an office outside of my house. Right. And that was one of my goals from the time I started my company, and that's what I've done. And I can be empathetic with clients or potential clients because I truly miss my office. Mm -hmm. um, not to be able to plan to move, transition my work environment from the office to home makes it a challenge. It's like I go to get something, it's at the office, it's not here. Um, I miss, there are a few people I share the space with. I miss them, even though we talk every day. Um, the hardest part, maybe this is something that will come out during the presentation, was, was and is creating structure around my day at home. Because like Peter said, you're, you're 
the refrigerator calls you, or in my case, I've got little fur babies who want my attention and they want to go walking. So that's still a struggle. I'm getting better, but it's a struggle to create structure in a different environment. It absolutely is. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Thank you for that, Nancy. You're absolutely right. I was uh, working with someone this morning and, and they said one of their clients is a single mother at home now. No, no more nanny. She can't come. She has five children under 10 years of age. Wow. I can't even imagine. <laughs> God love her. Any other thoughts or comments before we move on? Uh, Robert, Robert and Bertha both posted something in the chat box. Okay. And, I, and thank you for uh, sharing your stories. Uh, um, Robert has a mother-in-law in assisted living with COVID-19 where COVID-19 is present. Also a daughter working as a nurse in DC who just lost a baby. Uh, oh. And also I have a contract on my house and crossing the fingers to close by 626. Uh, that was Robert and Bertha had I agree with what you said, stay present, try to stay in control what you can. Mother-in-law was hospitalized, but since she's walked out with, but has since walked out with uh, health today, staying present is very valuable uh, as we go through this. And Tom experienced, as everybody has experienced, portfolio shock. Mm -hmm. Tom, tell us a little bit more about that, please. So as this was unfolding, and every day, if you looked at the severe downward um, trend that if you were watching, you all know, um, and then hearing the news about, you know, we're, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, is, that's my metaphor, but I don't see this getting better anytime soon. And there was one day when, um, our commander in chief announced that he would, there was some plan in the market really jumped up. It, they were putting together a, you know, a, a bailout plan. The market jumped and I called my financial advisor. I said, you know, maybe I should just sell everything right now. <laughs> it sounds familiar. Yeah. He talked me off the ledge and it's, <laughs> you know, gotten better, but, uh, but I just, I guess I will add, we need to be aware because I wasn't aware because I came up I, I'm bunkered down. I have a really nice man cave in the basement of our place. I've got a bathroom, a refrigerator, a home theater, a nice office. Uh, and I just stay downstairs all day, except I come up for a lunch break. So I came up at the end of the day and I, I was venting to my wife and she cried herself to sleep. She yeah. thought we were ruined. So I got to be careful. <laughs> I have to have a little empathy for when I vent. I, I learned that. Yeah, it's important when, when we do that to understand who's on the receiving end and how they perceive what we're saying and what their real, reality is in comparison to our own, right? It's a little bit different. Sandy? Yeah, I was going to say, I was on a, a networking call this morning with a bunch of uh, different people, and one of and we were talking about how everybody was feeling and how they were doing, and and he said, he wakes up totally afraid and is afraid all day long and all night long. I mean, his business is basically dead in the water at the moment. He doesn't know when it will start. He's got a couple of kids in college and one younger one, and he's just terrified. And I think that's because he was very profoundly affected, uh, like many, 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 many others. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I think I feel I'm weathering it fine. You know, I, it's not, that disruptive and so forth and so on. But I mean, somebody like Glenn is really, really having a tough time of it because he just, his financial security blanket has been taken away entirely. And his feeling of being the provider who can't provide is overwhelming. And I think there's a lot of people in that boat. There are, we actually know um, a number of them. Uh, Peter and I are very involved in the National Speakers Association. That's how we know each other, known each other for years through that organization. Peter is actually our immediate past president. Uh, and so many of our friends and colleagues, it's heartbreaking. Uh, their businesses are gone and they're just gone. And they're in exactly the same place. And that's, that's part of the ugly and how do, you, how do you do that? And I think it comes back to, and it's, this is very difficult, it's easy to say, 
and it's very difficult to get your arms around it, but get present, get present. In other words, um, I'm gonna move this if I can. There we go. Instead of being seeing yourself in that, in that big ocean and being overwhelmed by all of this uncontrollable turmoil that's going on around us, if we can just get in our own kayak and balance that carefully and focus on the waters around us, we can see better what's coming, we can see the shore, we can start navigating our path from a different perspective, from a different mindset. And I know when you're in the position, as you said, your friend is, Glenn, or Glenn is, Sandy, that it, it's, it, it's, it's really, really tough. What, what we're doing, what we're doing now, I think is so positive and so healthy and so good for all of us is to gather together and talk about all of this and put the realities of the situation out there, talk about it, and then offer some of the other things that we may be doing or we see others doing. We're doing it in the NSA. We have town hall meetings. We have Zoom calls all the time. I don't know about all of you, but I'm on this, this wonderful technology every day, all day, because it's so important to be reaching out right now to helping the people that we can. So it certainly is, it certainly is ugly, and there's a lot of bad to it as well. And if we start, go ahead, Peter. I said, actually, you, 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 know, you said something about changing your mindset. Right. Um, my business is not gone. It's hiding from me. <laughs> and I don't know where it is. I can't find it, but I know it's there somewhere. And that's what kind of keeps me moving forward is like, I, there, there's something there's out there that it will morph into. I don't know what it looks like, but, I, but I, I keep telling myself every day, one, it's hiding from you. It's a, it's a nasty game of hide and seek, but the game will eventually come to an end. And hopefully by that time, I will have found my business and it's not going to look the same way it did prior to this, but it's still there. It's just hiding right now. I like that. And if anybody knows where it is, please send me an email. <laughs> I'd be happy to cut this game short. <laughs> yeah, I think there are a lot of us that are, that are seeing, wanting to know where it's hiding. Um, if we... If we can take our focus now a little bit closer to home. So let's talk about what's happening inside. So we've, we've either had, we've either been going to an office or we have some of us who have been entre entrepreneurs for a while have our own space that we're comfortable with, that we work in, that's set up. But there's a lot of us out there who do not. And I think one of the biggest things we alluded to earlier we're all of those new FTEs. <laughs> so I'd love to, we would love to hear some of your experiences with dealing with those new uh, full-time employees, whether they are furry and four-footed or <laughs> uh, of the younger set or the older set, spouses, kids, pets, all of that. I know, Peter, you have a particular take on that. Yeah, uh, all of a sudden, one day I had two new FTEs, a 19-year-old that sleeps till two in the afternoon and a spouse who I try to delegate work to, and she's doing this other job with this other company. I put them on warning, performance warning two weeks ago. I think I'm gonna have to let them go this Friday because they have not improved their performance at all. Just gonna have to cut them loose. Good luck with that. <laughs> right. What are, what are some of the things that, that you are doing? Uh, now that if, if your circumstances have changed and now you're, you're in a different environment with, with different family members or friends or whomever, I, I know some people have ended up with friends staying with them throughout this because that's where they were when it all came down. So what are some of the things that you're doing to cope with that? Because we do have some thoughts around that that we'd love to share. With you. I'd love to know what you're doing first. Um, well, I think... I think someone mentioned it earlier, making sure that you have that dedicated space. If you, I'm blessed to have the space. I have um, my FTEs are my spouse and my four children. Um, the hardest one to delegate to is the three-year-old, um, but everyone else has a dedicated space and a routine. So there's classes going on. They're all on Google Classroom and they have a routine and a schedule. So we all try and follow 
somewhat of a similar pattern. So if we break for lunch, everyone's breaking for lunch. So I don't try to schedule anything around that time. And it also is very helpful to me, health-wise, mental, physical, and spiritual, because it makes sure that I'm closing shop at a certain time and not staying on you know, all day long, because now that's when the door gets you know, knocked down. Uh, so just keeping a routine, um, some similar structure, and making sure that we're all trying to do something at the same time. So they're in their classrooms, I'm doing work, and then we shut down middle of the day and at the end of the day, routine. Excellent. Thanks. We've done a we've done a similar thing. Um, my I have one child. He's in high school and he has his own space in his room. But when my husband had to start working from home, uh, I also wound up. Uh, I'm my mother's caregiver, and her program was shut down, so she's with us full time. Um, so one of the important things we did was we cleared my husband some space in one of our spare rooms so he, we got him off the dining room table and out of my mother's space <laughs> and um and then i just started scheduling i there's certain things i need to do with her every day so um i just started incorporating that into my calendar and put some structure around it and that was very helpful yeah i think uh this recurring theme of structure is so very important as we all know uh, human beings like structure so i think the, it's it's new structure it's different i am actually learning that myself when my business transferred um, very nicely into the virtual environment because i do so much of that anyway but what i found that i was doing and i didn't even realizing i was doing it is that i was filling the, the commute time that i didn't have anymore with more work and I continued to do that until I just kind of collapsed one night and said, what in the world is happening here? So it's an awakening, right? You have to look at this differently. And I think there's huge opportunity in this. If we can get our heads into the right space, I think we can find the opportunity. So I think it is setting guidelines, setting barriers. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I have a sign on my door that I get to close that says, you know, it's a big red stop sign. I'm on a Zoom meeting or a conference call, do not disturb, or it's a green go sign, you know, come on in, it's okay. So it's setting boundaries, it's making time for yourself, work time, scheduling. Um, I'm in the process of redoing my entire workflow every day because the old way isn't working anymore because I'm here so much of the time. Peter, what about you? What are you doing differently now, even though your business is hiding? Uh, well, let's go to Nancy. She's got a, she had her hand up. So if Nancy could, Nancy Taylor could. One Nancy. of the things, actually, I was just involved in a discussion with Jerry Schwartz, who's the executive director of Maryland BNI. He's been my client for years. And one of the things we're encouraging BNI members to do so that we don't feel isolated is to perhaps use that economic stimulus check that we got and maybe once a week order a carry out from one of the local restaurants as our means of supporting businesses in the area and then drive by pick up that for lunch and then go to some park and sit in your car you're still following the rules but you get to see maybe some birds or some clouds or things like that you're out of the house but you're you're doing something for others as well so that might be i've done it once i think it's another way of of restructuring my day to feel like I'm still part of the world and I'm giving back to others. Love that. Love that. Thanks, Nancy. Roxanne, I've got a couple ideas too that I've implemented. Wonderful. So one is, uh, uh, you know, we get to choose our own attitude. So I no longer say I'm not a morning person and I can get a lot done by waking up a little bit early each day. Two, uh, you know, we have this mindset that we work Monday through Friday. I know as consultants, we don't really, but uh, so I've embraced that, you know what, I need to have enough white space in my schedule that I'm not booked from first thing in the morning till dinner time. So, right. and then just embrace the interruptions every once in a while. Obviously you're on a Zoom meeting, can't be interrupted, but for the times I'm trying to get things done, whereas before maybe I had three or four hours worth of work I was going to do that day. Maybe if I got to two or three hours that day, uh, that was good. And I'm, I'll just wake up early Saturday morning and finish those last few hours. Absolutely, Brad, and I love that. And we've got that on the agenda to talk about, too, is attitude, right? Attitude, not only in how we see ourselves, but how we see the world around us and just kind of adjusting that and keeping that on track. 
Am I missing anybody? I'm sorry, I can't see the hands coming up. I've, I've, got, I've got you covered. Okay, that, that, thank yep. you. So, um, so one of the things that um, also I think is, this is one of those intangible things that's going on, and we don't always take a moment to pause and think about it. And that is that we all have biological prime time, right? Like you just said, um, there, there is, Brad, you just said talking about, I'm a morning person. Well, I've always been a morning person, but what I'm finding now is I'm a different kind of morning person than I used to be. So biological prime time is when uh, you're hitting on all the cylinders, everything is revved up, everything is charging and ready to go, and uh, you do your best work. If you have isolated what those times are for you, then that's when you block out that absolutely non-distracted time. Maybe that's, maybe that's Brad's three hours, or maybe that's your two hours or four hours or whatever it is, where you turn off the telephone notifications, you turn off the email, if you can, unless you have you know, other things going on, of course, but where you can focus on those things that you know are most important for, uh, for you to accomplish, for you to get done in this particular day so that you can move on to the next one. We are all really good at understanding getting things done in little bits and, um, and working through a plan, but this is all upside down now. So keeping our minds on that and keeping ourselves focused on, on what we are doing, what we need to accomplish, and how we need to get that done and in what time frame is really important. So I always thought I was a morning person, I still am, but I need different time and I need to be doing different things in the morning now because I'm not getting in a car going to a client. And that was always my think time. That was always my personal time. And I didn't realize that. And I filled that with more client work. And then I was wondering why I was being so unfocused at different parts in the day. So I'm changing that all back. What are your biological prime times? Peter, what's yours? I'm a morning person as well. Uh, but to your point, when I would, when I was traveling, traveling a lot, I would always take like the early flight in the morning. And that was my time on a plane to have thoughts and work on stuff and think. And, 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 and I'm, I didn't realize it, but I'm mirroring you because now at that time I'm just filling with stuff. Now, albeit I've started the third book, albeit I, I, it gives me time to be more creative, but it, it seems like I'm, I, I, I'm missing something there that all of a sudden now I feel at times a little bit overwhelmed. So I've learned to put a couple of different breaks in my morning and a couple of different breaks in, in the afternoon and just to get out of the house, walk to the mailbox or play with the dogs or, or just do something different to give my mind a rest. Excellent. Are any of you um, in, your, in your conversations and your interactions with your clients what are some of the things that they are learning? What are some of the things that they are discovering? Um, and are they? Are they seeing this as opportunity? Or are they buckling under it? I know I have two clients in particular that have just stepped up to this in amazing ways. And I'm learning so much from them in the way to handle things like this. What are your clients doing through this and how are you helping them? Roxanne, it's, it's Linda. Um, there's a client that I'm working with. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching client. And uh, he, he's been struggling with feeling like he's not accomplishing enough. And the discussion that we had um, kind of took the path of he thinks once he begins something, he should take it to completion within the time frame. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of, uh, you know, my, my, coaching call with him, I said, well, let's think about this. And I gave him an example of myself and said, I can be working on a project. And there it comes a time where my brain is tired. And I know that if I push it further, that's when I'm going to screw things up and get everything all wrong. So what I said to him was, don't beat yourself up because you're not getting to the completion of a project. You know, if you're to the point where, where your brain says no more, you know, it's not your prime time of day or whatever that looks like, as long as you set a time to say, all right, I'm done for today, my brain's exploding, I can't do this anymore, but 
I'm going to go back to this tomorrow morning. So it's kind of a, um, he's, part of his background is ex-military. So it's one of those, you know, once I started, I got to take it to completion. Um, and so it's just kind of a different way of thinking that it's not like you're not accomplishing anything. You are working towards the goal, but you don't have to complete it within, you know, Tuesday. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's kind of one thing that, that, um, he's kind of trying, trying to do. It's a little bit, he's got to change his attitude a little bit, but, um, he's working on it. That's wonderful. Anybody else? I know one of the things, one of the conversations I've been having with, with my clients, uh, I deal with a lot of salespeople in some of these organizations. And of course, we're all salespeople too. And they're frustrated because they're, you know, they don't want to be pushy. They don't want to come off across in the wrong way. Uh, and so the conversation has been change the conversation, right? Instead of talking about um, all the great things you can do, which we don't anyway, but really change the conversation and up it and just say, how can we help? Let's see what we can do. I work with uh, a lot in the insurance industry and some of those organizations are just stepping up big time and doing so many wonderful things for their client and they're not getting anything for it monetarily, but what they're getting is relationship. They are deepening and, and digging even deeper and forming those strong relationships, which eventually turns into uh, more robust relationships and more robust business because they'll come to you first. Other thoughts on clients and how we can help them? Okay. All right. We'll go to the next one. Ah, the vision, the crystal ball. One of the, um, <laughs> these are probably pretty much all smashed right now for a lot of people. You know, we've had visions about what we, where we thought we were going and what we were doing with our businesses. And I know some of these have dramatically changed as a result of this. So, um, now is the time, I think, to really step back. And in, in our work, we do a lot of this about visioning and what it looks like. Now is a time if, um, if we haven't helped our clients revisit dream inventories or if we haven't revisited our own. Now, I know I'm doing it a lot. Well, how does this change things? What am I looking, what am I learning? What am I looking at going forward? How does my vision of, of where I am in five years, 10 years, change because of this and should it how do we reinvent peter your thoughts what was that i was distracted no i'm just kidding uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i i agree um i, I haven't heard I, I haven't been exposed to the dream dream inventory but i i do know that i'm in the process of trying to figure out how i can bring more of my business into the virtual world and less of it in an airplane having to travel around the country uh, and trying to come up with ways to add a coaching business. I, like I said, work on my next book. Uh, I, I'm now moving some of my, my courses into using Zoom and virtual platform. And just trying to, and if, if you really want to get under Roxanne's skin, watch this. I'm trying to pivot. <laughs> She absolutely can't stand that word. And I, I agree it's been overused. But how do, how do I adapt my business to what, we're, what it possibly will be at, what, at the end of this? And, and it's just, it's a, it, it's a time for a lot of us that we wouldn't have because we're traveling or doing what we're doing to actually sit and think and become creative mm -hmm. and play a lot of what-if scenarios. And it's, it's I'm kind of looking at it as like, I got a gift. Um, I got a gift of time that I can now rethink my business where if, if it wasn't for this, I, I know what I would be doing. I would be stuck in, one, in, that, in that hamster wheel. I guess it goes back to attitude. Yeah, it absolutely does. I know that my, my five-year vision was that in five years, uh, I, the prim the, my primary business would be speaking, international speaking that I would have written a couple more books and that I would be going around the world and talking leadership to large groups of people. I don't think that's my vision anymore because <laughs> I don't think that's what the world is gonna do anymore, but I don't know that. 
So I'm starting to rethink all of that. So what are all of you doing in terms of stepping away? And this is where it's so important that we continue to balance our right brains and left brains. The right brain is going crazy right now because um, just because of the big ocean that we're boiling. We get in our kayak and we can start calming that down, getting the left brain engaged, and we start thinking about, okay, I don't even need to think about five years from now. That's a little bit too big. So, so let's narrow this vision down to what am I going to do in a month, in three months? Where am I? What am I doing now to make that difference? Have any of you started working on that or thinking about that or planning about that? Doug, you mentioned earlier getting into the planning part of this. So think about that. And I see that Nancy just did step up. So, Nan? I, I just wanted to make an observation about that, Roxanne. You know, when you're on social media today, whether it's uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, everybody's encouraging you to set these new mini goals like okay you have all this time now you should be learning a new language because that was in my dream inventory or i should be learning to paint because that was in my dream inventory to the point it starts people start feeling guilty like oh my god i'm not doing these things and i came across an article last week i shared it with some of my friends and i'll be if somebody wants to get in touch with me i'll be happy to share it it was written by a trauma therapist and she said we cannot forget that we are in the middle of a world trauma not a city trauma not a state trauma not a country trauma we are in the middle of a world trauma and we have to be kind to ourselves. We have to recognize these are, are not normal times. So no, it's okay to feel guilty or it's okay not to move forward on learning that language until I figure out how to operate within this trauma. Well said, and I love that perspective. That's absolutely right. And, and uh, the other thing that's interesting is that we shouldn't assume that everybody has all this time on their hands. A lot of people are even busier than they've ever been before, and that's creating its own brand of stress because they're trying to learn new technology and learn, think about ways to, to continue to help their business to survive, not just thrive right now, but survive. So absolutely, I get that. I think, you know, I, I got a guitar last year and it's still sitting there. I, I don't <laughs> think right now I'd be able to go in there and really learn how to play it. And I don't. I see we have a couple more people. Yeah, Sandy's got her hand up. Sorry, I done mute. Yeah, I think, I mean, this may be a minority of people, but a woman I was working with this morning, she basically said, she sees this all as a great opportunity, mm -hmm. which sort of surprised me. I mean, and her thing was, now she is of a station in life. She's not, you know, early in her career. She's late in her career. And she said, you know, it's really brought out to her, her values that are, you know, more personal and family. And now that she's not doing as much on in the work sphere because because of the nature of her business, um, she says she's she's finding that wonderful, and she wants to back away from some of the responsibilities yeah. and the job she had before. Yeah. And she's one of those people who it was probably a little bit there, but she probably was not seeing it or rejecting that or pushing that down as a thought. And this really let it bubble up and come to her like right in her face. And she said, yeah, you know, what's really important to me now is this whole other side that has gotten a bit short shrift. So, I, I mean, and I think there will be some people who, you know, really question uh, in that way. I mean, they may do it slightly differently, obviously, whether it's the volume of work, the you know, the nature of the, the kind of job they have, the kind of uh, business they run or what have you. But some people will, I mean, they really go back to that sort of primal thing, which links, you know, their, it's the attitude and their vision. I mean, because now their vision isn't just work focused. Right, right. And I think a lot of this depends too on the depth of trauma that you're feeling when, when you're losing loved ones and family and friends due to this, that brings a whole nother element to rethinking right? Our priorities and where we are and where we're going with this. Did someone else have their hand yeah, up here? Yeah, Tom Lomansky has his hand up and then after he's done, Robert Fritz can join in. Thank you. So we did a learning lab, I, I want to say it was about two weeks ago about 
using technology moving ahead and and I'd already gotten started on that but I I think we all get that Zoom or or whatever competitor you might want to use but we'll say Zoom cuz most of while well, we're all here um that's my new office and so okay how do I arrange my office in such a way that I can be professional despite my attire and my speech <laughs> background today but but I understand the audience here so I'm just I mean you know that used to be a quarterly thing okay but so um I have it's been said that um uh, HD web webcams um, are harder to get than toilet paper or hair dye right now, and uh, they're all back ordered. Uh, but I have one on back order, and it you know they promise it'll be here pretty soon, uh, in, in a month or so. Uh, it's on a slow boat from China, I suspect. Uh, and but what I was able to do, and I'll share this, uh, just because a picture's worth a thousand words. Um, I'm very proud of my investment. Um, I spent $13 on this green piece of cloth. There you go. Okay. Yep. And, you know, it's part of Amazon, $13, $12.99. It's part of, you know, how do I put, um, before this happened, I bought a, I've got a lighting ring. So, you yeah. know, I, I do have light in, in front of me anyway in this office, but um, I'm, you know, my face is lit up. Now I'm trying not to look too old, so I've turned off the light that's above me, so my my hair doesn't look completely yeah, white. Right. I mean, I've looked at those little nuances because you know this is we judge people, and and so I want to be judged in a more favorable way or or whatever way. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the new office, and so I've invested um, in, in ways of saying, okay, how do I be more effective in this office? And I bought mm -hmm. Zoom Pro uh, for the next year. You know what? Um, there are two comments, and then we'll go to the other person who's waiting to speak. Uh, you can, there is Zoom Botox. <laughs> you set it up. You, you can, you can uh, soften your face a little bit in, in your settings, okay? I played with that. It didn't seem to make a difference for me. <laughs> difference, right? It didn't for me either. So uh, then the other thing is, we're going to send you a follow-up article that Peter sent to me not too long ago called Zoom Fatigue. There is a real danger in doing it too much, and I have experienced it firsthand, and it's very real. I had been on it for three days in a row, from about 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., three days in a row, and by the third day, I, I, was a, I was a zombie. I turned into a zombie, not a zombie, a zombie, and it was, it was awful. I mean, I was depressed. I was, I was tearful. I was, it, it, it was really weird. It's a very real thing. But thank you for sharing. I love your investment in your new office. And who is Robert's next. Robert. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Robert. Hi. Thank you for putting this on. I appreciate it. First of all, Tom, you know, to your point, I've been trying to figure out simply how to put a camera on my monitor. So I'm not looking down like I am now, and I'm not looking off into the distance when I look at the monitor. And I'm sure there's a way to do that. And maybe you can help me out with that one day. But aside from that, we were talking about things we're doing differently. And, and I've had a couple of things that I think are working, and I hope they are. And I've, I've basically just looked at some different um, market segments than I had looked at before. And, um, and I can see as you dig into them where different realities happen for different types of people. And one of those areas have been, I've reached out to my alma mater, and I've, um, I've availed myself to do some coaching for the business school, um, not coaching, I want to get to coaching, but initially do some judging of first year students business final projects. I want to be able to use that by paying forward a little bit and doing what I can with the end game of, of not just the satisfaction of helping, but the, the end game of maybe capturing the interest of some students as they're going into the workforce. And as they're starting to become young executives, it may need some form of coaching for many years to come. So um, that's what I'm doing. And um, uh, Roxanne, I'm sorry you don't like that name Pivot because <laughs> I named my company Pivot Leaders and now I'm rethinking it. 
sorry, Robert. Really, no, I love it. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's, I, what I don't like is people who overuse the word in the wrong ways, and they use it all yeah. the time to describe everything. Kind of like know, awesome. Laser focused, and it's dead on. So you're good, man. Thank okay. you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you for that. Robert, just to give you a quick answer, I'm going to turn my camera around to show you. Oh, wow. You oh, can wow. mount a camera right inside the light ring. That was like 30 or 40 bucks at Amazon, and they're still available. Oh, okay. I got to get one of those, Tom. I struggle with the light in this office all the time. Okay. Um, yeah, if I, I'll, while we're on, I'll try to put a link in the chat box. That'd be fantastic. And, yeah, and, and then one last thing. So then you can take it and connect it to your computer obviously because we're you know that's where this feed is coming from it's it's designed um it's you know you you mount the camera inside the ring it's designed for i mean these are pretty good video cameras these things right um but because we're on zoom and you can get the zoom on your phone but i want the controls and so um when that slow boat to China arrives in port and ships me my new um, Logitech uh, 920C video high definition camera, um, I can mount it in there. And it does have a microphone, so the sound quality, my microphone's decent, but uh, so that's my plan uh, right. is to mount it in there when I get a HD cam. And this, this is working. I mean, it's like a day at the beach, right? <laughs> yes, you. Well, for us, actually, because we can see it. Well done. Well done. We're coming up on our time, guys, so I want to be mindful of that. But I did want to mention that one of the things that, um, that Peter and I have been doing through NSA, the Speakers Association, as well as our own businesses, is something that you were just talking about, um, uh, Robert, and that is uh, we've created these, these little mini seminars and workshops, you know, an hour long here and an hour long there on different topics, different areas of expertise that we all have. And we're, we're sharing client information and, and lining uh, our colleagues up with different people that we work with all of the time to go in and do these things virtually for some of these folks at no charge right now. It opens up um, new markets, maybe. At least it opens up new relationships. We're paying it forward. Do, we're doing it from our heart. We're not doing it. Uh, in a Machiavellian way, what we want to do is just introduce ourselves to more people and help them. Uh, so this this working but not alone, this home but not alone uh, thing that we're doing today, we're refining a little bit and I'm taking this into a couple of other companies. Uh, Peter's improv workshop is going into a couple of clients of mine, just things that we can do. They get connected to us in different ways and learn about us. It's a way that we can help each other and we can help our clients too and maybe get uh, get some new relationships formed in some potential new markets for us. Right. Great ideas all the way around. When uh, we were putting the slide deck together and, and Peter sent me his edits and updates, I looked at this and I said, gee, didn't you mean the new normal? And he said, no. <laughs> you want to explain that please, Peter? Uh, it's, it's the now normal. I heard uh, uh, on the news the other day, we, we haven't gotten to the new normal yet. It keeps evolving every single day. So every day it's something now. So tomorrow it'll be another now normal. It's, it's in the world of improv, basically we're adapting every single day until we get to that point of that new normal whenever that should arrive. I'm going to go to our last thank you and do the stop share. And what I'd like to do now is just open it up for everybody. Other comments, other thoughts, other takeaways that you can do, just kind of in an, in an overall summary of what we've talked about. It's just, you know, face the reality of it, get out of the ocean into your kayak and start, you know, managing the water around you. These are all things that we're already doing and already know. But anytime we can get a different perspective or maybe a different approach to it, I think that helps us add dimension what we're already doing and trying to help other people. So what other thoughts do you have or stories you'd like to share? We're, we're right on 359. I just want to be respectful of your time. I'm happy to hang on for a few more minutes. Roxanne, it's Linda. Um, conversation mm -hmm. I had today with, with a client who I sort of needed to talk off the ledge a little bit, but um, she said something that really kind of hit home and that's you know, we're in North Carolina, so this is hurricane country. 
And she said, and she's in the insurance business. So she said, you know, with a hurricane, we know it's coming. It comes, it does whatever it does, and it goes away. And then you can assess what you need to do to fix stuff. Right. This is different in that we saw it coming sort of, not really, but now it's here, but we, we don't see when it's leaving. So how do you address what you need to do to fix stuff if you can't see the end of this? And, and I think that's kind of an overriding feeling with a lot of businesses. It's like, I, you know, I'm doing what I can do, and, but I don't really know what I need to do. The kayak. Kayak, yeah, that's true. Kayak. kayak. You know, and you're right, Linda, and the other hidden part of that is we can only see part of the damage. We're not seeing all of the damage like we can in a hurricane. We can dig through the rubble and figure out what we need to right. rebuild and what we need to fix. We don't even know what this is doing. We know it's killing our, you know, it's coming after our infrastructure, our people, our lives, our everything. But we don't even, we won't know this for a while. Just to share one other quick story, uh, Bob was talking to a client in, in Myrtle Beach, uh, and they said, you know, they, they've not allowing any uh, tourists to come to town to rent units to go to the beach, etc. But not only that, anyone who made a reservation to come down to the beaches in the summertime, the uh, rental companies had to literally refund all of that money. So are they, they're not only not getting money in, the money they had in, they have to give back. Wow. And so, you know, they're going, what the hell, you know? Right, right Linda, oh my gosh. Mm. The, the, um, the venue that we use for our chapter meetings in Columbus, Ohio for NSA, uh, we've just found out is doing the same thing, right? They, they're going under because they, they're not getting any income in and now they're in the situation where they're starting to have to make refunds. Same thing, it's tough. Other thoughts, guys? Well, thank you all so very, very much. Yes. It's wonderful to see all your faces. I'm glad that um, that you're getting through this, that you're finding unique and innovative ways to do it. I think one of the most important things we can do is stay in touch, help each other where we can. Peter, thank you so much for, yeah. for joining in on this and co-facilitating with me. Wendy, thank you for, for asking us, inviting us to, to join in with this terrific group of people. It's wonderful to see you all. It's a pleasure thank meeting you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Roxanne. Bye -bye. Thanks, Roxanne. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Be thank well. You. Take care.